Hi, everyone. Thanks for uh, joining me today. I'm with Seth Klein, who is a great friend of mine from over 25 years, I think now, going, going way back uh, to the 90s. But uh, you probably know him as the founder, uh, the first founding executive director of the Canadian Centre for Policy Alternatives uh, in, in British Columbia. Seth, so thanks for making time out of your super busy schedule right now for us. Nice to be with you, Steve. So, Seth, I, I got to ask you this. It's, it's a bit of a burning question. I know you are a peace activist from way back to the SAGE tour. Uh, you and yeah. your friends got, got in a big old, I don't know, it was like a Chevy Impala or something, and drove across the country talking about nuclear war. Did you ever imagine that the title of your first book would be called A Good War? Yeah. No. That's the short answer. I wrote a war story, much to my surprise. Uh, and I talk about that right in the preface, that I am the, the last guy that you would have expected to write this book. I, not only did I cut my teeth in, in the peace movement like you did back in the 80s and, and 90s, but uh, I, my parents were Vietnam War resistors. That's why I'm a Canadian. Well, I think the point is there's an emergency going on and we need to respond to it on that scale. And I think you the, the point is you got to get people to, to think it. It's called the Good War, Mobilizing Canada for the Climate Emergency. So what, what is the Good War? What's the Good War? Yeah. Well, so I should say, I, was, I didn't originally plan to do this when I set out to write the book. I was going to write a book about what do we do about this harrowing gap between what the science says we have to do on climate and what our politics seems prepared to entertain right now. And how do we close it? And I, I was always just going to have a chapter on the Second World War because I've always found it, you know, that there was an inspiring story there about how quickly we transformed the economy for the Second World War. But the more I delved into it, the more I actually started to see parallels all over the place, not just on the economy. And so ultimately decided to structure the whole book around lessons from that wartime experience. And so every chapter is sort of half history, half present. How did, we, how did we rally public opinion then, lessons for now? How did we reorganize the economy then, lessons for now? How did we pay for it then, lessons for now? Um, what did we do for returning soldiers? Lessons for just transition for fossil fuel workers for now. But also, what were the wartime cautionary tales of the things that we don't want to repeat, the things that caused us shame? So that's, that's the gist of the, the structure of the book. So what you're describing is a, is a massive undertaking. And I can imagine you sitting there typing this book in last December thinking, is anyone ever going to believe this, that this is even <laughs> possible? Yes. And then March arrives, COVID hits, massive spending. Like, how yeah. has COVID, I mean, that's a huge punchline. Uh, it's, it's just basically taking your argument, right, and put a big mark red underline under it saying well it did throw me for a loop like all of us steve um so yes i had written the whole book before the pandemic i had in fact shipped it off for a final copy edit three days before the pandemic um and and the whole premise of the book was that we needed this historic reminder of how quickly we're capable of moving um only to have all of us now be experiencing this in real time uh uh, but I think that's helpful. We have all now, and so I quickly knocked off a, an epilogue in the book, by the way, about the parallels between the war and COVID and, and the pandemic response, and of course the climate emergency. And in many ways it sets the stage well for what now needs to happen, I think, because as you just said, the cat's out of the bag now. I yeah. mean, after being told for years, we can't afford to, to do this, you know, we have a federal government that, that just showed they could spend $300 billion without blinking an eye in the space of a few months, and the Bank of Canada financing it by, you know, purchasing $5 billion a week in government securities. And so now it's clear for everyone to see that this was possible all along. Uh, this, is, this is what we could have done in response to climate or homelessness if the will had been there. And now we just need the will to be there. A Good War, Mobilizing Canada for the Climate Emergency, and is published by ECW Press. It's available on sethkline.ca. Seth, 
Thanks a million. Thanks for your work on doing this. And I hope you sell a million copies. Thanks, Steve.